Um, following the presidential ballot in Afghanistan, the current president, Hamid Karzai, and his main challenger, Abdullah Abdullah, have both claimed victory. However, the preliminary results will not be made public until Tuesday. And the turnout of 50 percent was a lot lower than the previous election, as artist Tariq Mayuddin reports. The Afghan exercise in democracy, a presidential elections in a war-torn country. Many people did not dare leave their house to cast their vote because of the Taliban's terror threats. Only four years ago, over 70 percent of populations flocked to the polls to choose their leader. This time, it's been much lower. Both leading candidates, President Hamid Karzai and former Foreign Minister Abdullah Abdullah, now claim victory and both accuse each other of rigging the vote. There have been uh, rigging here and there. Uh, and in some areas very widespread. In a move to prevent instability and encourage people to vote, the government issued a ban on all media coverage of terror on election day. The foreign ministry threatened to kick foreign journalists out of the country and refused to answer all questions about attacks. But the measure did not help. There were 73 terror attacks throughout the country. 26 people died. In the last three years, the U.S. has tripled the number of troops in Afghanistan, but the Taliban has still kept its terror grip on society. They appear to have succeeded in keeping down the turnout in these elections, and this could undermine the new government's legitimacy. In a country which was promised a better future, stability, and democracy a long time ago, whoever provides security has the support of the people. The Taliban are not popular uh, in Afghanistan, but... If no one else will provide security and justice, they're going to turn to the Taliban as they did in the 90s. 20 years ago, the Soviet Union failed to bring peace to Afghanistan. Now the U.S. attempting to bring democracy to the country seems to be struggling. A veteran of a Soviet-Afghan war suggests that the only solution is to install an occupational government. Now it's up to Afghanistan masters in Washington, D.C. to decide who has to be selected and introduced as a new governor general in Kabul. The police in Kabul continues to search for weapons, hoping that there will be no more violence and no more bloodshed. But even after the final verdict, war weary Afghans will keep wondering at what cost democracy will arrive in their country. Tariq Mohideen, 